In this module, we consider inequalities and how we can use sign diagrams to evaluate when more complex inequalities hold. Inequalities are a way of comparing values when they're not equal. This slide summarises the basic notation and provides some simple examples. Two important symbols are the one for greater than and the one for less than. So we have x is greater than 2, for example. These are strict inequalities. Weak inequalities include the possibility that the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equal. And we use these symbols. So we might have 5 is greater than or equal to x. Inequalities are closely related to the concept of intervals. We come back to intervals a little later, but for now let's look at this inequality. Here we have x is greater than 5 but less than 10. That tells us that x is an element of the open interval 5 to 10. It's an open interval because the endpoints 5 and 10 aren't elements of the interval. On the other hand, if we have the weak inequality, x is greater than or equal to 5 or less than or equal to 10, in this case, 5 and 10, the endpoints, are both elements of the interval. So it's a closed interval. For an open interval, we use a round bracket. For a closed interval, we use a square bracket. Two important rules to note for inequalities are these. If we have x is less than some value b, and we multiply both sides by, say, minus 1, but any negative number, in that case, the resultant inequality has the opposite direction. If x is less than b, and we multiply both sides by minus 1, then we have minus x is greater than minus b. If we take inverses, we also reverse the direction of the inequality. So if x is greater than 0 but less than b, we take the inverse, and then 1 on x is greater than 1 on b. Here are some important properties of inequalities. The first is the transitivity property. If we have a greater than b and b greater than c, that implies that a is greater than c. We've come across the, the next two in the previous slide, or variations of it. If we have a greater than b and c is greater than 0, so c is a positive number, that implies that ac is greater than bc. On the other hand, if c is a negative number, and a is greater than b, then ac will be less than bc. So we reverse the direction of the inequality. Another form of the transitivity property, if we have a greater than b and c greater than d, then a plus c will be greater than b plus d. In economics, we often come across the concepts of strictly positive and strictly negative numbers. That's uh, a is greater than zero and weakly positive negative numbers. For example, a is greater or equal to zero. Inequalities can be used to describe intervals. We let a and b be any two numbers on the real line. Then we call the numbers that lie between these two numbers an interval. Open intervals do not include a and b and are represented by round brackets. Closed intervals do include a and b and are represented by square brackets. And of course, we can have a half open intervals. It's important you become familiar with this notation. Sign diagrams help us evaluate more complex inequalities. To start, we need our inequality in a particular form. We need the right-hand side to be zero, because a sign diagram tells us whether a function is less than, equal to, or greater than zero. The function on the left-hand side should be made up of products and ratios because we know the outcome when we multiply or divide by terms of the same sign or of opposite signs. For example, multiplying a positive number by a negative number gives us a negative number. Similarly with dividing. Let's look at a simple example first to get the basic principles and then it's something a little bit more complex. Here we're going to find when the inequality x minus 1 times 3 minus x 
is greater than zero holes. We start with the number line. Then we consider each term on the left hand side separately. First, x minus 1. We draw a dashed line when it is negative and a solid line when it is positive. We put a small circle when it's zero. Similarly with three minus x. A dashed line when it's negative, a circle when it's zero, and a solid line when it's positive. So we have negative and positive, negative and positive. So they're the individual terms in the left hand side. What we want to do now is to see what happens when we multiply those together. That is, we look at the left hand side as a whole. First let's look at the interval from a minus infinity up to 1. There we see we're multiplying a negative number by a positive number. That will give us a negative number. The next interval from 1 to 3. We have a positive by a positive that will give us a positive and from 3 to plus infinity we have a positive by a negative and that will give us a negative. At the points 1 and 3 our function takes value of 0 so we indicate that. We want to see when our left hand side that product is greater than 0 so we look at the last line in our sign diagram that's our interval there it's strictly positive, so we don't include the, the endpoints 1 and 3. So we can say that our inequality holds for the open interval 1 to 3, or for the interval that x is greater than 1 or less than 3. That's a very simple example, of course. When the function on the left-hand side has three or more terms, the sign diagram is more useful. Here's a more complicated inequality. First step is to get it into the right form and then to draw the sign diagram. There's a video that shows how to do that. Have a look at that video in a moment. Uh, let's first finish this module with one more concept. That's the idea of absolute values. We can link that to inequalities. The absolute value of a real number is a measure of its distance from the origin. It's represented by putting a pair of vertical lines either side of the number. Basically, we're getting rid of the sign of the number. We can combine absolute values with inequalities. Here we have the absolute value of x is less than some value b. We can interpret that as meaning that x is greater than minus b, but less than b. On the other hand, if we have the absolute value of x is greater than b, that means x is greater than b, and x is less than minus b. These expressions will become familiar when you do some statistics.